Are you tired of buying so many packs and getting nothing you wanted? Head on over to MrMuckCoin.com and use code GS for 10% off all purchases. You can also purchase players, training, coins, and much, much more. Link is in the description. Once again, head on over to MrMuckCoin.com and use code GS for 10% off of all purchases. What up is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Hopefully you guys are doing fantastic. We are, as of now, we are head-to-head -head ready. We did all the grinding we wanted to do. We figured out uh, what it is we want to do on both sides of the ball. And I'm very content with everything it is that we got. And now I feel like for those of you who've been patiently waiting for some live commentary gameplay, we're going to be able to provide that for you guys tomorrow. So I'm excited about that. We, we grinded everything out, put hundreds and hundreds probably not hundreds but a lot of time a, a lot a lot a lot of time into solos and playing grinding uh, a lot of squads and uh, let me tell you like when you get up there on legend legendary tear a super bowl from beginning to end is like 200 some odd k it's wild it's absolutely crazy how if you spend um, if you could do two Super Bowl runs in one day, like you're make, if you win both, assumingly, you know you're making like half a million. It's it's wild. It's it's crazy. The rewards this year for playing head to head are fantastic, as they should be. Now, mind you, the disconnects are happening crazily. So uh, hopefully, you know you get lucky and you don't get booted out of your playoffs or something like that, or you're in a crucial game to you know avoid demotion and it happens. But it's been happening to everyone, so. Uh, it's very unfortunate, but I've been lucky the past few days to where they've happened in the regular season and not in the playoffs. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at our new upgrades that we got. Um, offensive line is still the same except uh, Larry Allen that we got the other day. Uh, still want to upgrade this, but for now, I feel like you know it's there's really nobody that can handle the defensive line. Like we have 90 overall, Reggie White and. And 90 overall if you power up Michael Strahan and Khalil Mack and Donald. And there's no one that can handle those guys consistently. So I feel like right now is not really too smart to heavily invest in the top tier offensive line. Because you can have 87, 88s everywhere. And good luck consistently trying to stop Khalil Mack, Aaron Donald, and uh, Von Miller. And they're just so good. They're so good. And, and the offensive line is just not there yet. You guys know I care about offensive line more than anyone. It's my number one most important thing to attack. But because there, there's not 92 overalls that can handle the Khalil Max right now, I'm just going to wait until better offensive linemen come out. Um, one thing that I did today, we went on a big Super Bowl run. So I took all my coins and I invested in a ton of training. I purchased 12 um, superstar elite cards, the 84s, ranging from 30 to 33k, and that left me with over 8,000 training. And I put Brawler on over, I think, 11 cards. And Brawler, I feel like, is better in my in my opinion, in my opinion, more suitable for how I put my team than Sprinter. So tier two is going to give you plus one strength and speed. You're going to lose one Excel. Now that right there obviously sucks right this year they have it to where you're going to lose attributes no matter which one of these you choose so let's say i chose sprinter i would have gotten plus one speed and acceleration but i would have lost one agility and to me i just i need my secondary to have agility i feel like agility is very important and last year i really realized how important it is where if i had corners with low agility they're just not breaking on the ball the same they're not able to swivel them hips and turn around and make plays and I value agility. Uh, and Sprinter, if you max everything out to Tier 4, you're going to lose 2 agility and 2 strength. That's that's big. I love my strength because I feel like strength factors in a ton with your offensive line, your defensive line, your break tackle. The more strength you have, the more you're going to be able to just uh, you know have more efficiency with your defensive line, right? Because you're you're stronger. You're going to be able to break more tackles because you're stronger. You're going to be able to do things because you're stronger. Like no matter what, no matter which one of these you choose, you're losing something. So I really looked at the pros and cons. Acceleration and speed is great, but I don't want to lose strength and agility. Here, speed and strength are great, but I'm losing one agility, one strength. Now I just said all that about agility, and I'm losing an agility here on Brawler. 
but I'm only losing one. To where a sprinter, I'm losing two agility and I'm losing two excel I mean uh two strength. Where both of these I still get uh plus two speed once it's all said and done. So if I'm gonna get plus two speed, why not get plus two strength with it? Only lose one excel and one agility instead of losing two strength and two agility. That, that, that's just my thinking. If you want to make a case that sprinter is better than brawler, I understand, I get it. It's how you set your team out. For me to run the ball a lot, I need strength because I need to be able to hold these blocks. But I invested um, all that. It was like uh, 300 and some, something K in training. And then I, I put it on Brawler. Now, offensively, I chose Kittle because I'm going to have Kittle throughout the year. And then I, I feel like the smart thing to do is do it on your level master card because Tory Holt is going to continue get, getting upgrades throughout the entire year. So I know I'm going to keep him, you know, for the most part, the entire year. And then on offense, uh, no one else here because I feel like everyone else will be replaced at some point. So I really don't want to put it on, let's say, a Marcus Allen and then Jim Brown drops next week and then he's better and I get him. So, you know, I feel like I want to put it on guys that I'm going to keep for a while that I can consistently see getting upgrades soon and uh, cards that I'm going to hold on to the rest of the year. But offensively, everything else stays the same. I have an 86 overall offense or something like that. I have a 90 overall defense. And we've really put, again, a lot of resources in here. Now, uh, a few changes that I've made. I've gotten Derek Brooks. I don't know if he was there last update. But we faced me and uh, one of my clanmates, FTO Savvy. Uh, I run defense. He runs the offense. And we matched up against the Derek Brooks one time. And we were clowning this card. Like, yo, he's not good. Like, you don't want Derrick Brooks. When, when are you going to use him? Like, he can't stop the run. You can't have him at pass rush. Like, he's just awful. He's got good speed and good zone. But who uses linebackers in zones? Like, he's just useless. Until we played him. And he was everywhere. He was shedding blocks like a Tasmanian devil. He would insta-spin off of every block and get us in the backfield. And we were like, yo, this card's the GOAT. And, and I picked him up after playing against him. And I've been happy with my decision ever since. Um, 92 Von Miller we got. And I put Brawler on him because I feel like Von Miller usually gets, you know, very, very, very good cards throughout the year. And every time he upgrades, you know, I want that plus two speed on him, that plus two strength and uh, whatnot. So um, we picked up Harrison Smith. Now, the reason why I picked him up is because I was trying different things out and also picked up uh, Stephen Gilmore here. And I picked up John Randall, Reggie White, and Bobby Wagner. And um, I was trying different man zone schemes and things like that. Because you could only have three abilities. And Harrison Smith has zoned out. And that right there gives him better reactions in zones. And I was like, you know what? Let, let me let me go up to Harrison Smith. Because he gets zoned out. Let me get him. Uh, Richard Sherman has it. For those of you who don't know, in order to get zoned out, you need... Um, 90 stock zone now Harrison Smith his uh, card gets it without powering up because he has the pre-built ability so um, It comes with it already, but improve the reactions and catch knockouts in zones And I feel like with zoned out they actually play zones like pretty good I know a lot of people are complaining about zones, but since I went to this um, Defensive scheme putting two zoned out players out there Sherman and Harrison Smith play fantastic for me in the zones Um and they've just been doing very, very, very well for me. Uh, like, I know ET3 would be able to get it, but I don't have him powered up at some point. You know, if I can hopefully go on, like, another Super Bowl run or two, I'm going to get him maxed out, get him powered up, and then I'll be able to... I can probably put it on him now. Um, no, you can't even put any, any abilities on him. Uh, but eventually, I want, like, three maxed out players with zoned out... And those are going to be my abilities. And I was just talking to uh, someone uh, showed me their defensive team and asked them, who do you have your X-Factors on? And they said, I have one on Vaughn. I have one on uh, Khalil Mack. And I was like, to me, it's not worth it putting on defensive linemen. In my opinion, because from my experience, Vaughn Miller and Khalil Mack and Aaron Donald and John Randall, they're going to be disgusting no matter who you face. Because there's no great offensive line that can handle these guys. So, um, one, yeah, but to put a whole scheme around it, I'd rather have better zone coverage. Because I've had 
uh, three secondary guys when I was trying my man up scheme when, when I got Stephen Gilmore and I have him with man up and I was trying man coverage and I put it on Gilmore I put it on uh, secondary players and Von Miller a naked Von with no abilities not active whatsoever was still getting me three four sacks a game I would have John Randall out here with two three sacks one game he had over seven sacks seven sacks and these guys had like 90 hope and they had Marcus Allen, but John Randall was just a goon with no abilities. And then after thinking about it, I've been more successful with putting guys in the secondary with abilities on than my pass rush because Von Miller is going to eat no matter what. He's just that good. So if you have top-tier pass rush, if you have a Michael Strahan and you have him with edge, you know, dominant edge rush or whatever it is, or power move specialist, Trust me, he's not going to do as good, obviously, because you take those away from him, but he does just as good without it because he's already such a monster. And Harrison Smith and Sherman have been taken to another level with zoned out active, I promise you. I, I, I cannot tell a lie. These guys with zoned out have been disgusting for me. Um, you take a look right here. See, he has zoned out in tip drill, and then Harrison Smith as well. Have zoned out in tip drill, and I've been putting both of those guys in my cloud flats, and they've just been like swatting post routes that they should have no business near. And it's just been incredible. And and for now, that's how I, I'm gonna keep it. But um, I picked up Bobby Wagner today because I'm having a little trouble stopping the run. Stopping the run is not easy. And um, I had Deion Jones previously, but right now I'm back in multiple playbook. And uh, if somebody, if I feel like they're going to run the ball, because stopping a Marcus Allen with evasive is not easy. One of the most difficult things to do in the game. And how you really stop him, you got to get to him before he can get space. Uh, you have to try to get him in the backfield. Even then, he's still going to juke and make people move. But if you can just close the gaps and smother him and get to him before he can really hit the open space, you have a good shot of containing him. And I was previously had Deion Jones there, and I was looking at Bobby Wagner, and I got him for like a, a decent amount he averages his average price is like 185 and they got him for like 180 like just under like an eyelash under his uh his regular price and to me it was like okay i just got to get him um 82 block shed 92 play rec 92 tackle uh very good strength and i have um brawler on him so he is going to be able to you take a look at his acceleration is affected it's blue but when you go to the attributes, it's down to 80. So he lo he loses an acceleration, but plus one speed, plus one strength. And I feel like that's just going to just help me out overall stopping the run. So if I feel like you're going to run the ball, I'm going 3-4. I'm going to have Brooks on the outside. I'm going to have Khalil Mack on the outside. And I'm going to have my middle linebackers as Vaughn and Wagner because they have the highest block shed. And we're going to try to stop your run that way. Uh, because stopping the run again is, is not easy. But also, I put Brawler on Richard Sherman because I'm going to keep him throughout the year. Jalen Ramsey, I'm going to keep him throughout the year. Aaron Donald, I feel confident I'm going to keep him throughout the year. And um, Ken Houston, I felt like his speed is so good right now that I think 90 or 89 speed is going to hold for quite a while. Even if there's better strong safeties out there, I still see me keeping him um as like a specialty like punt returner that way i can manually sub him in because his speed is just so good i mean six foot three high speed i'm want this card all year so i put brawler on him the only people i really put it on that was kind of like eh, was uh harrison smith i had like one more to put it on to activate the speed i didn't know who to put on so it's like let me just go with smith and let me say this card has been fantastic for me like really good like surprisingly disgusting since i've gotten him he, he's been a monster um, so, uh, right now we have it on Shazier, Wagner, Miller, Mack, Houston, Smith, Gilmore, Sherman, Donald, and then the two guys on the offense. So all those guys right now have plus one speed, plus one strength. Um, and also the last thing I really wanted to grind that I got today which I was super excited to get. I still got to get the kicker and punter, but that's going to take a few Super Bowl runs, which hopefully I can accomplish soon, um, was Coach Madden. I finally got over a 1,000 trophies, and I was able to get the Tier 1 collectible, and, which cost 100 training. You know, all these are 100 training. Last year was 1,000. This year is 100. And I got uh, past the 
tier one. So that right there gives me plus one man. Um, excuse me, that's tier two. Plus one finesse move and plus one zone coverage to the entire team. And obviously, it's more important on defense. I don't care if Tom Brady gets plus one zone. I don't care if uh, Torrey Holt gets plus one finesse move. But um, that right there allows me to get two extra players that I did not have before in the zone threshold. Now, according to my sources, the, the zone threshold is 90. And I had two guys with zone at 89 that was just there. But then the, um, now mind you, I have lockdown maxed out. And um, I'm trying to work on pass rush too. In order for me to get pass rush to tier 3, and that's what you need for a plus 1 finesse move and um, power move, I need, I really need more 88s, the guys that can get the times too. And that was another plus to getting Wagner. Like, okay, that's another, that's an extra lockdown. And I was at like 40 lockdowns. So I removed some lockdown and I put pass rush on Aaron Donald, John Rando, uh, Reggie White. And tier 1 of pass rush does nothing for my pass rush whatsoever. Plus 1 pursuit and press. Tier 2, um, the catching and like it, it, it doesn't do much of anything. Uh, tier 3 though, power move and finesse move. In order to do that, I need more 88 overall pluses so I can get the times two chem. And um, like if I uh, like I can't get it powered up ET3, but um, who else has it? Like if I get like a back, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try to do it. Like I'm gonna try and get like if a, another D tackle comes out, that's an 88 overall. I'm gonna try and get it so I can do the chem uh, right end. If I can get uh, someone that's an 88 overall eventually when I got it like that. You know, I want all these guys to be able to have times to, like right now, I don't have anybody as a backup right outside linebacker. I have Anthony Barr out of position, so I can manually sub him in. But eventually, I, was, I would want at least tier three of pass rush so I can give plus one finesse move and power move to my whole defensive line. Um, but yeah, the two guys that had 89 zone that just was able to hit the threshold of, of uh, 90 was Jalen Ramsey. He has 87 zone stock, I believe, or 86, powered up 87. And then I got him up to um, I got him up to 89 with tier 6 of lockdown, which is plus 2 man in zone. And then John Madden, plus 1 zone, puts him at the 90 threshold. And I've yet to play a game with him, but I can tell ET3 has 90 zone, and he's been disgusting for me. Um, so and so as Harrison Smith, so I really think it, it makes a difference. There's not a lot of people say zones are bad because unfortunately there is a threshold and there's not too many players that have it. And um, so I want to try and take advantage of that and get the players that do have it where they can make plays for me that other players won't. Uh, unfortunately, Mel Blunt, you see, he's just at the brink of 89. He falls short where he's unable to go. But Ken Houston had 89 zone. And he just reaches the threshold of 90. So that right there gives me several players with 90 zone coverage. I have ET3. I have Harrison Smith, Ken Houston, Jalen Ramsey, and um, Richard Sherman. That's five guys with 90 zone coverage. So if I put all those guys out in nickel uh, over G, if I come out in dollar, dime, quarters, three, four, whatever it is. If I put all those guys out there, all of them have 90 plus zone coverage. Stephen Gilmore unfortunately does not. But he has great man coverage. So that plus one zone gives me two new players in the threshold. And I feel like it, it's a very, very, very big thing. So, again, a live commentaries gameplay will be available tomorrow. Hopefully, you guys are looking forward to that. I haven't played too much head-to-head. -head. I've just been grinding squads, which is how this team has uh, really how you're looking at it. A lot of it came from just grinding there. And, again, the rewards are superb. So um, now we feel like we're ready to, you know, go online head-to-head -head and and have some fun, and uh, hopefully, you know, do well. But at the end of the day, hopefully uh, make you laugh and have you enjoy the video. Let me know your thoughts and process on the new squadron. Are there any cards here you guys see that you're excited to see gameplay of? You know, whether it's Ramsey or Sherman or Hope or Allen or Brady or Harrison Smith or Khalil Mack. Let me know who you're excited to see that we have here. And uh, hopefully I can make some big plays happen with them tomorrow for you guys. Until next time, appreciate the support, man. Leave a like on your way out, man. Definitely helps out a lot. Until next time, peace.